Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today we will discuss exponential growth and decay. So this is just sort of a natural <clears throat> application of differential equations. Uh, and just before we begin, some vocabulary. So we have this phrase, A is proportional or directly proportional to B. Uh, all that means mathematically is that uh, that value a is equal to some constant k times that value b. That's all it means. Uh, similarly, if you hear that a is inversely proportional or indirectly proportional to b, um, mathematically all that means is that a is equal to k divided by b. All right, so you'll be seeing those terms today, so that's why I figured I'd let you be aware of them. All right. So moving on, and uh, something that, that's also going to come up in today's lesson is <clears throat> we'll be integrating 1 over x dx or 1 over y dy. But, um, and throughout the year, I've been telling you that this is equal to ln absolute value of x plus c. Uh, today, I'm going to justify that whole absolute value thing. Um, let's actually do that right now before we get into the true lesson. So uh, it's... Pretty straightforward. Um, let's start out with the function ln of x. So we're sort of going to justify it in this direction. We're going to start out with ln of x, take its derivative, and you're going to see that the derivative of ln of absolute value of x uh, is equal to 1 over x. And so it should follow that the integral of 1 over x is equal to the ln of absolute value of x. So taking f of x is equal to ln absolute value of x, uh, just giving you a sense of what the graph looks like. Um, you'll notice that this is defined for all real numbers except for at x equals 0. It's kind of hard to tell based on the graph, but I assure you that uh, this function is not defined for x equals 0. And just to justify that, um, ln of absolute value of x, that is really log base e of the absolute value of x. Okay, so here we have log base e of absolute value of x is equal to y. Um, another way of expressing this actually is that absolute value of x is equal to e to the y. And as you can see, uh, if, if you plug in any value from negative infinity to infinity uh, into y, e to the y is never going to equal zero. Okay, and so that's just justifying the fact that uh, zero is not in the domain of... That was not good. Uh, zero is not in the domain of this function over here. Okay. Anyway, so that's our function. Since it's an absolute value, or since an absolute value exists in this function, um, I can re-express it as a piecewise function. So ln absolute value of x can be written as ln of x for x greater than 0. Um, also, it can be written as ln of negative x for x less than zero, okay? And now when we differentiate, because of course we are interested in actually finding the derivative of this guy now, when I take the derivative of a piecewise function, I need to do so uh, for each branch separately. Uh, so we, we've learned earlier in the year that the derivative of ln of x is just one over x. So this should be fairly, uh, familiar to you at this point, that when I differentiate this top branch here, I get 1 over x. The bottom branch, though, slightly different. Let me just change colors. All right. The bottom branch here is a composition. So when I differentiate, I am going to need to use the chain rule. And that's exactly what happens down here. You can see 
the derivative of the outer evaluated at the inner. That's this first term, 1 over negative x here. But then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inner. Uh, and the derivative, of course, of ne uh, negative x is just negative 1. And you'll notice that if I combine these two terms in that bottom branch, I just get 1 over x again. So it's true, uh, and I've just shown you that it's true, that the derivative of ln of absolute value of x will equal 1 over x, no matter what value, um, no, for, for every x value in the domain of the function. All right, again, so this is what we have just shown, that the derivative of ln of absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. And so it follows that if we integrate 1 over x dx, then the antiderivative should be ln absolute value of x, of course, plus c, depending on the initial condition. All right, so there's that. Uh, let's take that as truth for this lesson. All right, moving on. Okay, this obviously is not supposed to look like this. I don't know what's going on here. And we're back, folks. I don't know what that was, but I fixed it, and now we are back. So here's the do now. Uh, please go ahead and solve this differential equation. I know it does, there's an S here, and I'm just realizing that now, but uh, I got rid of the second one. So just solve this differential equation. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of assume that you paused and attempted it yourself. Um, and once you do that, uh, we will go through it together. So just take a moment, pause me, attempt this problem, and then we'll pick it up from there. All right, welcome back. I, again, am assuming that you attempted, and let, let's see if you got the right answer. So, uh, for starters, this looks like a pretty nicely separable differential equation. I'm gonna separate in the following way. So, I'm gonna write, rewrite this equation as dy over y is equal to 2 dt. And of course, I need to integrate both of these. The initial condition, you know, that, that'll come into play in a little while. All right, so uh, now these need to be integrated. So the left side, integral of 1 over y dy, uh, that, as we mentioned earlier on in the video, should be ln absolute value of y. Uh, and of course, plus c, but just like yesterday, I'm going to... Um, move all the constants to one side anyway, so just to save some time, I'm just going to uh, ignore the plus c on the left side. The integral on the right, um, the integral of 2 dt is just 2t. And now, now we have a plus c. All right, well again, the job here is to isolate y. Uh, so in order to get rid of the ln function, I need to apply the inverse function. And the inverse function is the exponential e. So I apply e to both sides. Uh, e to the ln absolute value of y is just absolute value of y. Uh, and on the right side, we get e to the 2t plus c. I'm just going to work with this right side for a little bit. Um, so we continue on absolute value of y is equal to the 2t, uh, sorry, e to the 2t times e to the c. Now I want you to notice that e to the c is itself just a constant. Um, I also want you to notice that both of these terms are always going to be positive. So on the left side we have an absolute value, but on the right side we have two terms that are always positive. e to the 2t, always positive. e to the c, always positive. Therefore, in this next line I'm going to drop the absolute value. Um, and I'm also going to rewrite this e to the c as just one big constant. Okay, so, and I, I, it's typical to just bring that constant to the front of the expression. So y will be equal to c 
times e to the 2t. Okay, and this is our equation, equation but that constant now can be solved for um, by using the initial condition. So let's go ahead and do that, running out of room. Uh, y of 0 is equal to 6. Um, and really, that just means that 6 is equal to c times e to the 2 times 0. All right, And this obviously shows us that c is equal to 6. And so your final answer, y as a function of t is equal to 6 times e to the 2t. All right, and you'll notice that the initial setup, dy dt being equal to 2y, um, when we solved that differential equation, we ended up with an exponential function. 6 times e to the 2t is an exponential function. And so you'll notice that anything of the form dy dt is equal to 2 times y, or, or k times y, I should say, more generally. Um, you'll notice that when integrating and solving that differential equation, you'll get an exponential function as a result. All right. So this is uh, this will always be true for a differential equation of this form. So let's apply this to a problem. We'll work through this one together, and uh, then I'll show you another problem where I will just give you the the answers. And, you know, you should work through it and try to figure out how to get those answers. And, of course, any questions, you know, feel free to, to ask me. So, anyway, start here. A lot to unpack here. Uh, oil is being pumped continuously from a certain oil well at a rate proportional to the amount of oil left in the well. All right. So... Notice what this is saying. So this goes back to the vocabulary that we discussed earlier. So A is proportional to B. Well, in this case, A is the rate of the oil being pumped. And we're, we're being told that that rate is proportional to the amount of oil. Poor job of underlining. Okay. We're saying that that rate is proportional to the amount of oil left in the well. So another way of, uh, the, the way that we would express this uh, mathematically is that the rate of change of y with respect to time is equal to some constant times y. And that is, of course, where y is the amount of oil left in the well at any time t. All right, so the rate over here is proportional to the amount and that's where this equation comes from. All right, so in the future, you'll be given the description. You will not necessarily be given the equation. Uh, so just make sure that you understand how to convert that sentence into a mathematical relationship. All right, uh, moving forward, we are told that initially there were 1 million gallons of oil in the well. Six years later, 500,000 gallons remaining. Okay, so th these to me sound like, you know, an initial condition and then some other condition that will help us solve for constants. Uh, and it goes on to say that it will no longer be profitable to pump oil when there are fewer than 50,000 gallons remaining. So very likely we'll be asked to figure out, well, when will it not be profitable to pump oil from this well? All right, so let's see what they have in store for us. Part A write an equation for y, the amount of oil remaining in the well at any time t. All right, so we need to start out, here's a, uh, we need to start out with the differential equation and then we're obviously gonna try to solve it for y. So let's set it up, dy dt is equal to ky. Again, they defined y to be the amount of water, uh, sorry, the amount of oil in the well at any time t. And so dy dt just represents the rate of change in that amount as time goes on. All right, separate this differential equation. Uh, I'm going to end up on the left side with dy over y. 
on the right side, k dt. This should look familiar. I'm going to integrate. And what do I mean by that? Well, this is very, very, very similar to what we did in the do now. Okay, so I'm going to sort of buzz through this kind of quickly. Feel free to sort of pause me if necessary. Um, this moves on to say that ln of absolute value of y is equal to kt plus c. Okay, moving forward, absolute value of y is equal to e to the kt plus c. Continuing forward, we have y is equal to big C times e to the kt. And again, if you don't understand like how, how I got from step to step, um, if you scroll back uh, and check out the do now, I go through those steps in a little bit more detail. All right, but now we're not done. By the way, I'm going to write y, the left side, I'm going to write it as a function of t. So, so y of t is equal to c, big C, times e to the kt. We're not done yet, though, because those constants don't really tell us anything. We, we are interested in a particular solution here. And we were given information that allows us to determine the particular solution. Uh, so specifically, we were given that y of 0 is equal to 1 million. OK? And that just means that 1 million is equal to c times e to the k times 0. All right? e to the k times 0 is just 1. And so this implies that c is equal to 1 million. All right? Um, but there's still the constant k to deal with. And for that, we will use the other condition. And that is that when time equals 6, the amount of oil left has to be 500,000 gallons. All right, so I'll set 500,000 equal to 1 million times e to the k times 6. And now this is a matter of solving this equation. So I'll go through the details here. I'm solving for k. So first thing I'm going to do is divide by 1 million. So on the left side, I have 1 half. And on the right side, I have e to the 6k. Now, again, I'm solving for k. So I want to somehow isolate it. Uh, so I need to get it out of that exponent. So I'm going to apply ln to both sides. All right, the left side becomes ln of 1 half. And that, of course, will just equal 6k. Uh, I wrote 6x, that's out of habit, but it's actually 6k. And of course, then that, that just means that k is equal to ln of 1 half all over 6. Now, really in a perfect world, you'll leave k as that, that exact value, but if you do want to approximate um, round to no fewer than four decimal places. So I'm going to say that k is approximately equal to negative 0.1155. All right. And so our final answer, I know there's a lot of work involved, but our final answer for the particular solution is that y of t is equal to 1 million times e to the negative 0.1155t. All right, there we have it. Now let's use this equation to answer the follow-up questions. So I'm going to start part B over here. Let's just remind or let's read what B says. B says something kind of interesting. It says, at what rate is the amount of oil in the well decreasing when there are 600,000 gallons of oil remaining? This is actually uh, a lot simpler than it might seem. So just carefully understand that they're asking about a rate, a rate of change in oil. Well, we were actually initially given that 
the rate of change in oil is proportional to the amount of oil in the system or in the well at that particular time. I'm going to change the marker color. Okay, so we were given this information. That is the equation we need for part B. So we can say that dy dt is equal to, sorry, I'm actually going to erase. And really what we're interested in is what is the rate of change in oil when the amount of oil is equal to 600,000. So uh, 600,000 gallons. So another way of writing that is we're interested in dy dt at y equals 600,000. Well, in general, we know that dy dt is equal to k times y. Uh, and so all we need to do is plug in 600,000 for y. Um, and so k, remember, we discovered from the last problem was negative 0.1155. And y is 600,000. Okay, multiplying these two numbers together to approximate the rate, and we get negative 69,314.718. And of course, we should include units since this is a rate. The rates would be gallons per year. And that's part B. We're done. Just use exactly what we were given. And let's move on to part C. Actually, let me, let's do, all right, B will be all in black. C will be all in blue. So let me change real quick. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so scrolling up, what does C say? Uh, C says, in order not to lose money, at what time should the oil no longer be pumped from the well? Okay, so this goes back to that last sentence in the original description. It says, it will no longer be profitable to pump oil when there are fewer than 50,000 gallons remaining. So we really just want to find exactly when there, ex there are 50,000 gallons uh, in the well. And then, of course, that will be the very last moment where we should pump oil. So let's use our equation that we discovered in A, because remember, y of t tells us exactly how much oil is left in the well at a particular time t. So let's say that we're interested in time t1, okay? And at that time, t1, there are gonna be 50,000 gallons of oil remaining. Okay, we'll set that equal to our function, which is 1 million times e to the negative 0.1155 t1. Okay, and now this is just solving the equation for t1, very similar to what we did in part a. I'm not going to go through all the details, but you should end up with. T1 is equal to approximately, let me approximate, 25.937 years. Okay, so it should take about uh, close to 26 years um, before this well becomes unprofitable. All right, so there we have it. Um, those are, that's part A, a, B, and C. If you have any questions, please, 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 of course, ask. I'm gonna show you one more problem and the answers to those to that problem, but I will not be going through the algebra in the same detail that I did here. Um, I'm gonna show this to you so you can sort of try them on your own, check your work. If you're not getting the same answer, then you email me and we'll work through it together. All right, so here we go. Problem two. Pause it, read it. I'm gonna scroll down now. Here are the answers. Okay, so do the best you can. Um, if there are any questions about 
this topic or, or anything else, again, please, please, please Google Classroom, email me, anything, just um, don't be afraid. And uh, that's it. I hope all is well. Take care.